What is up guys, Ethan here from Warcorn Productions, and today we'll be doing a muzzle flash tutorial. Okay, so before we start, I just want to say that us here from Warcorn Productions want to thank you guys so much for over 300 subs. It really means a lot to us. You know, 300 isn't really a big number, but for us, not being able to upload that much, it really means a lot. So, thank you guys so much. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to turn this into that. So let's get started okay so first things first you guys are gonna need to get your footage and import it now to do that you just come up here and click file import file and then go find your footage it's that simple so once you get your footage imported just take it down to this button right here and drop it there now as you can see this is just the raw footage of your file it looks a little bland so I'm going to take a break and color correct it real quick and I'll be right back. Alright, so as you can see, I'm back and we have color corrected the footage. See, before, after. Okay, so the first thing you want to do for, this for any muzzle flash is to find the frame, the first frame where it starts to shoot. And the first two shots, you know, here and here, the camera's moving too much to do it for because what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out the first frame of the shot to make it look more powerful so not that one but right here as you can see it's straight and then the frame after it starts to go up a little bit so straight a little bit now what you wanna do is select it right there select your layer press control shift D that's gonna split it and then go one frame forward control shift D again and you're going to select this little middle piece and press delete. And what this is going to do, once you slide it back to fit, it's going to make the gunshot look a lot more powerful. It's just going to make it look a lot more realistic. So you're going to do this for the remaining shots, which there's two more, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I've done it for the remaining shots. Now if you watch this real quick, this is what it looks like. Now as you can see, for those last two shots it definitely looks a lot more powerful so that helps a lot in making a re more realistic shot so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna find this last shot will be better for us to work for on the muzzle flash because it's a lot more clear not as much motion blur so we're gonna use that to show you guys how to make a muzzle flash okay so the next thing we're going to do is finally import our muzzle flare. Now for this, we're actually going to include some stock footage at the end of the video. So you guys can actually download this video if you have no stock footage. And just download this video and use those, cut those out of the video and use those for whatever your projects are. But actually, if you guys have Action Essentials too, then you already have what you need. And don't I know what you're saying no oh, action essentials overused blah 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 blah. well we're not actually using the muzzle flares from action essentials because I think these are too commonly used and they're not very realistic we're actually going to be using the charges from action essentials so I've already selected two that look good for what we're doing here so and they're already imported so I'm just going to go ahead and drag it into my shot real quick. And find the right spot. Let's put this above it. And I know it looks bad, but just bear with me. So what you're going to do is you're just going to position this up and scale it and stuff. Alright, so once you get done positioning and scaling your muzzle flare, you're just going to come over, click on it, and change it to screen. And that's just going to help all over take away the darkness of the image so yeah next thing you want to do is take your muzzle flare and make sure that's only one frame long so just trim that up however you'd like next is you want to go to effect color correction curves and then just kind of bring up RGB make it a little bit of a lighter color I say about right there looks good okay so next thing you want to do is go to your flare and go to effect or actually go go to the side here and type hue h-u-e 
click on hue and saturation and drag it down to your charge layer and just drop this down to about I'd say negative 40 something and this is just to make it match the color correction because this is a very desaturated you know it's not very colorful color correction so I mean if you had a very colorful image or a colorful color correction then I wouldn't I would skip this well I don't, I don't really know actually it just depends on what looks better to you now you want to go to effect again go to blur and sharpen and click radio blur change this to zoom leave it at 10 and then take this and put it about where the hole in your barrel is and that kinda like if you flip on and off just makes it look like it's coming out of the barrel okay so next thing uh, where are we gonna go oh yeah effect again but make sure you have this selected first go to effect and then stylize and glow and then you kinda just play around with the settings I think 76 364 wait what, what was that let me see real quick 346 and 1.4 and that kinda gives it a little fall off now we're gonna go back into this stuff hue and saturation and change that down to somewhere around say negative six maybe next thing and I think this is probably the most critical and important step to making a muzzle flare and that is the blur so go to effect blur and sharpen and find Gaussian blur and put this at around I'd say five and that just makes it all out more realistic so pretty much the next step actually that looks a little crooked let's fix that right quick okay nah well hold on a little more yeah that's good okay so the next step is to duplicate your muzzle flash layer so just take your muzzle flare and duplicate it and there you go that's pretty much I mean you can go in and like let's say take charge 16 let's see where like let's say we take this and you could put it on screen you know line it up like we did before and then scale it up and you know doing this is kinda just like you fiddle around with it you gotta find out what looks good and what doesn't you can't just do it you know what I'm saying you gotta figure out all the nooks and crannies if you will of editing and it just just trial and I, I don't know what the rest of the trial and e effort I don't know <laughs> that was a fail <laughs> anyways but you could do something like this and kinda of put it in there but pretty much you just copy everything from this and put it onto that new flare to give it a more depth feel but for now well I guess I could do that yeah that's good okay so we're not done yet we're done with the flare pretty much but not with everything else we still gotta add you know I mean actually if you want to you can add well whoops you can actually add more got to make that one frame long you can actually add more than just one frame of flare you could do that and then kind of fade it out right there which actually let's go ahead and do that I have kind of a faded flare there let me go find a charge that I can use for that and I'll be right back alright so for the we, we went ahead and imported another flare to kind of fade out after our initial flare so let's go no let's go one frame before that no let's go one frame before that yeah that looks pretty good so just kinda of put it where the gun was not not necessarily where the gun is but where it was so let's see let's go back is there so we kinda of put it right here and pretty much copy all the stuff from it from the previous flares to this one and trim it and stuff 
get it looking good. Okay, so what I've done is uh, I went ahead and tracked the null to the background here so we can go ahead and add our smoke. So, um, there will be smoke at the end of this video for you guys to download, but if you guys already have smoke, then good for you. Just import it, find a place where you want it to start, trim it up. Obviously, turn it on screen. <laughs> you have that big, annoying box around it. And scale it up a little bit. Not that much. Uh, about just whatever looks right to you. Because, you know, every situation is different. Position it. And you want it to start on the frame right about there. Because, well... I guess we could start it right here if we position it correctly. Yeah, we could. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. I guess just start it, start it on the first frame, and then it's gonna kind of just come out of the barrel like that. And then you can take it and parent it to no one. Then it'll stay with the background. And what you can do to make it look a little more realistic is make it kind of go off upwards and to the right to make it look like the wind is carrying it so take your smoke press position or P to pull up the position keyframe that go to the end of your comp and just take this kind of drag it up turn on your motion blur for the comp and for the smoke just make it a little more realistic and uh, <clears throat> watch it real quick and I don't know if this is gonna look good I think it will though yeah it kinda just rises up that that's what a real gun does kinda go up to the side and looking at it right now it looks a little little has a little too much opacity so just drop that opacity press T bring up quick opacity drop it down to about mm, Let's try there. Yeah, the next thing we want to do is make our environmental glow for the muzzle flare. So take your footage file, duplicate it, control D, I believe. Yeah. And then take the top one and go to set the uh, thingy. I don't know what it's called. Whatever it's called. To add. Actually, no. We're not going to do that because that looks terrible. Color corrected. Go to color correction curves. This is another way of doing it. It takes a little more time, but whatever. Bring up the RGB and then bring up red. And that's just going to give you kind of the color that you need that will be cast off from this. You're going to mask around the areas that you want to be affected. About like that and yeah that looks terrible so let's fix it <laughs> uh, yeah just feather that out press F feather that out now if you turn off turn on turn off turn on you can tell that that looks like it's being lit up right actually looking at this let's bring up the red a little less red about right there that looks about good I had to mask around this stupid stuff in front of Akashi's face, but whatever. Do this for every... Make sure you're selected. Do this for every part that you think. So, like, around the hand area. That should be affected. Feather that out. Pretty much just... Areas that you'd think would be affected by the light coming off the muzzle flash. So pretty much anywhere. And if we look here, off, on, looking at it, and it's a little too bright. So press T, drop the opacity. I'd say about right there. Let's see. Uh, a little more. Yeah. 
yeah that's about good and then we can click up here on this and make sure it's on a uh, ellipse and then just do one for the wall one for the wall position it feather that one out too just do whatever it looks right to your eye so go one frame before the muzzle flash and con control shift D just get that out of the way delete that you want to press T and well go to the muzzle flash press T and go click opacity keyframe the opacity so at 40 and then below that one frame before that make it zero so it goes from zero to 40 so it kind of brightens up the scene as you shoot then go two frames past that and make it all the way down to zero again so it kind of fades out from being bright and if you want to you can add like a lens flare to it brighten up the whole scene and stuff but for right now this is good enough okay so let's go ahead and add the slide back motion of the slide so just take all your stuff and hit the I button That'll turn it off. Then zoom in here. Take your footage file. Control D. Duplicate it again. Press your press G to switch. That's a hot key to switch to your pen tool. And then just mask out. Just mask out the slide. You don't have to do all of it. If you're from a side view, you will. But I can't do all of it because you'll be able to see the barrel. Go to what you just masked and take the scale bring it down to about not 998 that's way too big bring it to about 98 <clears throat> and then take it and bring it a little bit back then take the feather by pressing F bring that up not too much but it really doesn't matter just about there make it look realistic and then go to effect blur and sharpen and directional blur make that the same direction as the slide slide up that directional blur so you turn back on your muzzle flash and then there's your shell I mean not your shell <laughs> there's your uh, slide you can make it to where it goes back for two frames you know one frame all the way back one frame half and then one frame all the way back to normal but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm actually just going to make it one frame long. That way you don't have to sit here and watch me do all this stuff. So just one, and then it's going to be gone. So one, one frame. All right, so let's go ahead and add the hole on the slide. <clears throat> Excuse me. So make a new black solid. Turn it off. Go ahead and mask out where you think it'd be. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Keep in mind this is where the bullet comes out, so it needs to be about the size of a bullet. Take the opacity down. Feather it out a little bit. About right there. Let's see. Before, after. Yeah, that, that kind of adds a dark mass inside. So, yeah, that looks about right. And then... Make sure that's only one frame long. So trim that up real quick. And okay. So now let's go ahead and do the shell. Let's switch these off real quick. Okay, so if you don't have stock footage for the shell, you can head over to Independent VFX. They have a really good tutorial on how to make a shell inside After Effects. No third party plugins. Really good tutorial. You can check that out. But if you do have shell stock footage, then just pop in your shell and then start keyframing. One thing to keep in mind, I've already done it, so because it's really long process. But one thing to keep in mind for pistols is it starts off fast when it comes out of the chamber. So right here starts off fast and then slows down about where it starts to arch and then speeds up as gravity takes place. So fast slow fast and you can do this for rifles also but I just found that it makes it look a lot more realistic than just staying the same speed 
So keep that in mind when doing shells. I always had problems with timing the shells correctly, and I found this out actually by independent VFX. So yeah, if you're having trouble with keyframing the shell, just remember fast, slow, fast. And actually, going through here and looking at the lighting looks a little too dark. So instead of 40% opacity, let's go down to this layer with all the masks and stuff to light it up and put it at 70. Now let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Alright, looks pretty good. Um, another thing to keep in mind about shells is that it actually uh, doesn't need to be full opacity to the thing. Like, I have it, I think, 80% for the first half of it, and then like 40 or 60 when it's when it's right here. So just play with the opacity and make sure it looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some gas escaping the chamber with the shell here. So let's just turn these off real quick so we can see what we're doing. Just import any smoke stock footage that you have. Make sure it's on screen. Time it up. Say about right there. Trim it up. And then put it where the shell is. Now, for this, you're just going to keyframe it to what looks right. I guess probably coming out this way fast at first, and then kind of slow down. Okay, so I kind of messed around with the scale, position, and rotation of it. And just kind of went around seeing what looked best. And it kind of speeds up at first and slows down and drops the opacity off as it fades out. So I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, if you wanted to, you could add like, I don't know, a lens flare or something to brighten up the whole scene as a whole to this. And, you know, I might do that in a second, but if you guys want to do that, you can go ahead and do that. But I'm not going to put that in the tutorial because it's pretty self-explanatory. But right now I'm going to do it for the rest of the shots and add some sound effects and I'll be right back. Alright, so I went ahead and put VFX and sound effects through it, all through the shot. So let's see what we have here. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something from this tutorial. Leave a like if you did. Hit that subscribe button down below. Comment more tutorials you'd like to see us do in the near future. Next week we should be uploading a new action short. And we should hopefully be doing those more often now. We'll be doing more action shorts, more tutorials, and of course our new zombie web series Pathogen this summer. So stay tuned for that. So until next time, stay awesome. Be careful, try not to lead her home. Shawty heart is on steroids cause her love is so strong. You may fall in love when you meet her. If you get the chance, you better keep her. She's sweet as pie, but if you break her heart, she turns cold as a freezer. That fairy tale ending with a night in shiny armor. She can be my sweet